When I was in Bournemouth recently, I looked out over a beautiful blue sea, imagining the distant and tiny dots of wind turbines on the horizon, generating enough electricity to power 700,000 homes. But very sadly, these wind turbines will now not be installed. The Navitas Bay offshore wind array was just one of the casualties of this government's ideologically driven war against renewable energy. Local Tories spearheaded a campaign against the project on the basis that it would damage the Jurassic coastline and undermine tourism. But at the same time, they are championing the case for fracking, which will mean the large-scale industrialisation of the beautiful countryside that makes up the Jurassic coast. While the opponents of onshore and offshore wind have been noisy, surveys have consistently shown that the public favour renewable energy over fracking. Recent findings reveal that only 3% strongly support fracking, while 59% of respondents said they supported onshore wind. During the fracking process, a large amount of water, together with chemicals and sand, is injected into rock to release the shale gas. During this process, radioactive elements and heavy metals are dislodged from deep underground and carried to the surface. The result is a toxic, radioactive waste fluid, which is a serious threat to people's health, especially those people who live near the fracking sites. Some of this toxic waste fluid is deliberately evaporated, creating airborne carcinogens. Leaks, spills, faulty equipment and human error all add to the significant risk that the fracking process will also contaminate our fresh water supply and soil. It seems utter madness for our government to be pushing this industry in such a densely populated country as the UK. Other countries in Europe have seen sense. France, Bulgaria and Germany have all banned fracking and Scotland has introduced a moratorium. Greens in Europe are pushing for a permanent Europe-wide ban on shale gas exploration. But while we have a government that refuses to acknowledge the risks associated with fracking, it is left to campaigners and communities to say a clear no. From Balcombe to Lancashire, communities have seen off the frackers, and I'm deeply impressed at the number of anti-fracking groups that have sprung up across the southwest to fight the threats that we all face. From the Forest of Dean to Dorset, from Yeovil to the Mendips, communities have a clear message to the would-be shale gas exploiters. Frack off. As Greens, we agree there is a place for fossil fuels, underground. We simply cannot continue to exploit new fossil fuel reserves while pledging to protect our climate. And sucking the last few dregs of fossil fuels out of the ground is diverting our energy from the urgent need to make that transition to a truly low carbon economy. We know that the way to provide energy security safely and sustainably is to exploit our fantastic and diverse range of renewable energy resources through an exciting mix of wind, solar, marine and other technologies we can produce in excess of 100% of our energy needs through renewables alone. In the process, we can create over 122,000 new, high-quality jobs and add £4 billion to the southwest economy. This is a far greater economic return than fracking or nuclear could ever offer. Renewables also offer the opportunity to seize back control of our energy supply from giant, often foreign-owned corporations and hand it to the people in the form of cooperatives and social enterprises. It is clear that renewable energy really does offer power to the people. As Greens, we will continue to stand firm with communities as they oppose fracking. Like them, we don't want millions of gallons of water, sand and chemicals injected into the ground under our homes. We don't want our groundwater and soil contaminated or our air polluted. We want our government to take seriously the future of the climate that our children will inherit. And we want the beautiful landscapes of the Southwest to be preserved and protected forever. We say no to fracking and yes to a total ban on this dangerous industry.